All right, so we are now on the desktop of Windows 8.1, Visual Studio 2012, and they decided to make it look modern. They set to all caps. I don't know what, why they thought that was a good idea to do that, but so these have been metronized and they brought back Windows Phone, but you have to install a separate SDK. This is the part where I just can't really install the whole thing to really see all of it. So you have Visual Basic, C Sharp, C++, we've got Direct 3D now, F Sharp. Take a look at what F Sharp looks like. So looking through this. And so the biggest change of 2012 is that you can create Windows 8 apps. Because you know, you, you got this whole craze for this new platform that really didn't take off. You have to get a developer license. I'm not gonna sign in. Well, the little widgets have been metronized with 2013 with the release of 8.1. This one came out with a dark mode enabled. And now you can develop applications for 2013. Something called Light Switch, kind of like Silverlight. It has support for TypeScript. JavaScript that came out with 2012. You can now write in Python in Visual Studio. So yeah, you get more programming languages. Visual Studio 2015. So two years later. And it's no longer all caps, as you can see. Go to New Projects. There you got C Sharp, Basic, F Sharp, C++, SQL, TypeScript, Python, JavaScript, and then you got game so you can like integrate visual studio with unreal engine unity and cocos also in these versions uh you don't really have that setup visual studio setup creator you just have install shield also has support with they're now working with zimarin to build iphone apps there's also a thing for visual studio called microsoft blend it's been around with like the expressions nothing much has changed you got your basic controls and that 2005 default icon. All right, now we are on Blend, and you can work with WPF application Silverlight moving right along. Ah, yes, uh, this is where everything got too big. So all I have installed is Visual Basic and C Sharp. So if you want to do anything special, you have to go to the in Studio Installer, and as you can see, you can. You can add in some stuff like, let's see, what do you want to do? Linux development, you want to work with Azure, costs another four. Python, takes a, a few megabytes. Web development, takes up a few other uh, megabytes. Working with the UWP, takes 16 gigs. Desktop development, so yeah, unlike the older versions, you get to like pick and choose. It's like going to a burger place, or actually a pizza place. The editor, the basic editor, and it's like the dough and the sauce. What these are here is basically the toppings that go on top of it. So I can pick up as much as I can. And the more toppings you add on, the, the more expensive the pizza will be. So if I were to just get everything, like install, like do, I want to do all of this on this version. It's going to cost me 45 additional gigabytes. Let's go ahead and show you Visual Studio 2019. You got a new splash screen. So right there, so you can just pick your project right there. And you can just select your pro your project that you want to do. Like this one, this Python application works with Linux and Mac. And it has like, like uh, labels, like keywords. You got your toolbox now. Oh, and your menu bar is right at the top. But yeah. That's 2019 right there. And then next we get to Visual Studio 2022. Most of the changes from what I saw were, it made it look more in line with Windows 11. Okay, so I'm on their page of the changes of Visual Studio 2022. And uh, apparently 2022 was the first version to utilize 64-bit code. When I was back doing segments with Visual 2010 and 2008 on Vista 7, what I did is that, hey, I'm gonna run this on a 64-bit version of Vista 7. And then I open up Task Manager, dev emv.exe, and it says, this is a 32-bit application. Find and files is faster, they kinda uh, updates for Blazor and Razor, I have no idea. 
what that is. Uh, designing for everyone, look and feel. Uh, yeah, the refurbished shit, you know, you had that in the old Metro thing. I got changed. Uh, so uh, at first I thought it was just like, oh, it's just gonna be this visual improvement and it's just gonna use AI and stuff. But, but in reality, it actually actually was a back end overhaul and that is they ported it to 64 bit after oh no like 22 years tw about 20 years since x86 64 came into play 64 computing started being made you know and now we got to the point where visual studio 2022 is 64 bit i thought we did this earlier but i was wrong so that's something i learned today and so if you liked what you saw comment like subscribe and I will see you guys next time.